Hello friends, my name is Coolio and welcome back to the channel. Today guys, I'm going to be going over my top 10 tips that I wish I would have known when I first started playing Dragalia Lost. Now these 10 things I'm going to be going over, for those of you that are veterans of the game, may already know all of this information. However, the reason why I decided to put this video together is I've actually received quite a lot of questions from you guys on how to progress through the game, what are some of the best setups, how to obtain certain items, and so I decided to put this list together to hopefully enlighten some of you guys about the different mechanics and systems that you can find within Dragalia Lost. Now the first one I want to talk about is the different ways that you can obtain Wormite for free in the game. Now obviously we all know that Wormite is used to summon heroes in the game and we want to try to get as much as possible because the more heroes, more dragons, more worm prints that you get, the better that you can progress through the game. Now we all know that you can get free Wormite simply by playing through the story missions where if you get a 3 star on each of the story missions you can get a total of 25 free Wormite sent to your uh, to your gift mail up here at the top, your goodie box. Uh, some of the other ways that you guys have noticed, especially for beginners, is that when you play with new people during co-op missions, you get 50 free Wormite per uh, each new person that you play with. However, some of you guys may have noticed that you suddenly aren't getting that bonus anymore. And the reason why is it's actually capped out at a total of 2,500 Wormite that you can get simply by playing the co-op missions. Once you've played with 50 new people, you no longer get that extra free Wormite. So you may be wondering, well then where can I get more Wormite as I play through the game? Well obviously you can jump in anytime you beat any new missions, new dungeons, you get some free Wormite from that. As well as if you complete your daily endeavors, limited, normal, any of these things, there are missions that will give you Wormite through there as well. However, I think one of the things that people may not realize is that you can get free Wormite through what's called Adventurer Stories and Dragon Stories. If you were to go to any one of these, any of the unread stories will pop up right here. All you have to do is watch that story, you can even skip it if you want, and you get 25 free Wormite for the first time for the first chapter story that you listen to on a new hero, and then I believe 10 extra Wormite after that until you've completed the story for that character. And the same thing goes for the dragons as well. And so those are really great ways that you can obtain free Wormite in the game. Okay, now for my second tip, I want to talk about the helper system. Now, if you've ever jumped into an event quest and wanted to play it solo, you'll notice that you have the option to pick a character uh, from one of your friends list to jump in and play with you. Now, I'm actually going to show you where that actually comes from. If you head over to the more option, head over to the friends list, at the very bottom is the helper settings. Now, I highly recommend you either pick a healer character or a defense character for your helper settings because it helps out your teammates and your friends, anyone else that decides to use your heroes to jump in through some of the dungeons. Now make sure to keep your helper hero either updated or constantly change them out for which one, whichever one you think is the best because it definitely helps out those of us that decide to run solo missions and need your help when we're running those dungeons. Okay, now for my next tip is I highly recommend that you play through the story missions first and at least complete chapter 5 of the story missions. And the reason why that is, is once you've completed chapter 5, almost every single dungeon and progression system that you can use in the game is officially unlocked. So if you were to head over to the home section, go to the events page, some of the bigger ones that will unlock if you've beaten all of the chapter 6 missions is obviously the Avenue of Power, Avenue to Fortune, the uh, Elemental Ruins, the Dragon Trials, and a lot of people don't know this, but the Imperial Onslaught. These are all things that you can use to progress your character through the game, as well as it unlocks things such as upgrading weapons, adventures, mana circles, crafting dragons, and worm prints. There's a lot of systems and even shops that are unlocked once you beat Chapter 6 to allow you to exchange items and allow you to progress and upgrade your character, such as the Treasure Trade, the Dragon Trials Trade, as well as the Imperial Onslaught Trade through the Treasure Trade system. All right, now for the fourth tip is a lot of you may not know this, but one of the most important things in the game that we're trying to obtain is Eldwater. Well, if you have some extra three-star worm prints or three-star dragons that you're not using anymore, you can actually head to your collections tab, head over to your worm prints or your dragons and actually sell the three-star or higher ones to obtain some extra Eldwater. See right there, picking those three four-star worm prints gave me 3,000 Eldwater that I can use now to upgrade uh, any of my other heroes. However, just a little bit of a tip if you're gonna be using your dragons at least try to level them up to the Highest level to unlock special bonuses and wormite and things like that before you decide to sell it All right The next thing I want to talk about is the upgrading your skills and unlocking new skills through the mana circle and by crafting weapons 
Now, if you didn't know this, your character will get a total of three skills that they can use when running into a dungeon. Two of them are unlocked through your mana circle, and the third one is actually unlocked dependent on what weapon that you're using. So one of the biggest things that you're going to want to start working on is actually crafting and then updating your weapons because if you end up crafting and enhancing them, getting them up to higher levels, you'll actually be able to unlock special abilities for that uh, for those weapons to be able to use. For instance, my Ensorcelled Sword gives me the Ensorcelled Slash ability for my character, which allows for uh, dealing damage to surrounding enemies. Now, if we were to head over to the Mana Circle, one of the first things the game teaches you about is the four strike ability that you get right off the bat which is at the very bottom in the first ring of the mana circle but if you didn't know this the higher up you go on the mana circle you'll actually upgrade your abilities for instance one of the ones i'm currently working on is getting to the tier three of my healing double buff which grants an hp regen buff for 20 seconds each time a defense buff is received so if you want to upgrade your skills and your abilities that your character is using try to get better weapons as well as the focus on your mana circle now the next tip I want to give you has to deal with the dragons that you equip onto your character and I cannot tell you how many times I've seen this and it's just kind of hurt my heart where somebody will equip a dragon of the wrong element to the wrong hero. And the reason why is you're missing out on a huge elemental bonus. If we were to take Ezalith here for example and actually take a look at her, uh, because I've got my dragon equipped onto her, if we go ahead and take a look at Agni, he actually gives me a flame strength of a plus 40% increased strength to this character because she is a flamed attuned character. Now if I were to equip him on to a different hero that wasn't a flame based hero, I would not receive that bonus. And I cannot tell you how many times I've seen people using the wrong types of dragons for specific heroes. And you may think, oh well if I've got a flame hero, maybe if I use a wind dragon on top of it to defend against water based elemental dungeons and, and bosses, that it'll actually help out. It really doesn't. The best bonus that you can give to your characters and one of the sh you know, one of the best ways that you can improve your might is by equipping on the same elemental type dragon to the same elemental hero. Alright, the next tip I want to talk about has to deal with your castle system, specifically the castle grounds. Now I have a lot of people asking me, how come I'm not able to upgrade my Haladim? And it's keep asking me for something called a facility level. Now if you look up on the top left, you can see my current facility level is 72. Now the way that you increase your facility level is by upgrading each of your different structures within your castle grounds. Now if you look over here, I've actually upgraded two of them already. So if I go and complete these, you can see that my facility level now goes up to 73 as well as 74. Now some of you guys may not know that, so I just wanted to share that with you. It's kind of a quick tip. So if you want to increase your Haladim, make sure to upgrade all of your little structures as fast as you possibly can and keep coming back at least every half an hour to an hour to see what you can actually upgrade. Alright, so the next tip that I have has to deal with obtaining elemental materials to improve and increase your hero's abilities through the mana circle as well as elemental weapons. Now a lot of us already know that uh, there are certain events called the elemental runes that you can run through, but what happens if the elemental rune that you need actually isn't there? For example, today is the water scour runes, so I can get water elemental based materials to use to upgrade my characters, but what if I need fire ones? Well there is a way that you can actually obtain some of these that many people may not know about. So if you head over to the dragon's roost, you can actually increase your bond with your characters and with your dragons to be able to give you special rewards. So if I were to go ahead and take Agnir, a fire type dragon, and actually give him a reward, pop that in right there, gets all happy, enjoys it, and he will actually give me some gifts. Now there is a advantage to this, as you can see sometimes they'll give me the right elemental things that I need, hopefully. And there we go, we got some of the flame skills, and those are some of the things that we need to upgrade our characters. And the better the gift that you give them, the higher the rewards that you'll get. There are actually some gifts that uh, the dragons like more than others and will actually give you uh, one and a half times more rewards for that gifts that you give them. But if, you, if you're looking for a couple a little bit more of elemental things and elemental uh, orbs and stuff for your characters, you can head on over and give some of the gifts to your dragons and they'll be able to give those back to you. Alright, and now for tip number 9 has to deal with the player experience that you gain from playing the game. I had a lot of people ask me what's the best way to level up my uh, my player account and it's obviously just to run through some of the dungeons but some people are wondering well which dungeons give the most experience the way that a dungeon uh, determines how much experience you get it de is determined by how much stamina you spend in that dungeon so if I were to go to the avenue of power it says it costs 15 stamina to run the avenue of power on expert mode 
That means that dungeon will give me a hundred and fifty experience towards my player account. Now for every one uh, level of stamina that you use, it gives you 10 experience for your character. So if you're ever wondering which ones to run through to level up your account the fastest, look for those that have the highest amount of stamina and try to run those uh, over and over again. Alright, and then for my final tip is actually understanding your character a little bit better. So if we head over to Ezalith here, you can see the main page talks about her overall HP, her strength, her might, her current level, and how many nodes that she currently has unlocked in the mana circle. Well, for those of you that may not know this, there's a little details button right here that tells you some of the uh, bonuses to HP and strength that she's acquired either through her levels, the weapon that she has equipped, what worm prints, dragons, abilities from the uh, mana circle, and how much power she gets from the halidom. And if we head over to the next page, it actually tells you the skills that she has. Now, you may not know this, but the top two that are yellow specifically mean that those are skills that she's acquired through the mana circle while the red one on the bottom is a skill that she's acquired from what weapon she has equipped. If we head over to the next one, it talks about her co-abilities. These are abilities that are shared with the entire team. And then the next one, we have her overall abilities and where she's getting a lot of her bonuses from. So the top two, these passive bonuses that she has, are obtained from the Mana Circle. With the third one that's actually blocked out is one that I still need to unlock. The next two, the Poison Resistance as well as the Water Resistance, specifically come from her uh, worm prints that she has attached to her with the blue one that flame strength coming from her dragon and then the last things that we want to talk about is her overall equipment that she has attached to her my weapon my worm print as well as my overall dragon so it's just a nice little thing if you ever want to kind of take a look at your character if there's any specific parts of her that you need to work on uh, if you want to know where some of her bonuses and some of her strengths are coming from what skills that she has acquired and where they're what those are coming from this is a really great way to go in and just take a quick look at your character to understand them more completely well guys i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more dragalia lost gameplay footage coming in the future see you my friends